Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. This is Dr. Daniel Sugai, board certified dermatologist. I got a new fancy microphone here. I said when I hit 1,000 subscribers, I'd upgrade to a microphone. So hopefully you're enjoying the new improved audio. Um, I'm gonna keep doing videos even though clinic is booming, very busy. Um, a lot of patients uh, need to be seen uh, after we reopen. So um, nice to see you all again. I really miss my patients, but good to see you all on my channel. And thanks for supporting the channel. Today is a very uh, a highly requested topic by you and those on social media. Uh, I'm gonna be talking about uh, scalp psoriasis, dandruff, the yeast that lives on our scalp. Um, so let's jump into it. Many of us suffer from dandruff, me included. Um, dandruff is a mild form of this condition called seborrheic dermatitis, different from seborrheic keratosis, which are the little barnacles that grow on our skin after age 30, we start to make these um, warty growths or brown spots, um, very different from that. So seborrheic dermatitis is a inflammatory condition that will affect our scalp most commonly, but it can also affect around the ears, in the ear, the eyebrows, the hairline, around the nose, the chin, or in the beard, sideburns, even go down to the V of the chest, armpits, and groin. It's due to a yeast called malassezia. We pick up this commensal microbe as, uh, as babies, and that's why we have our cute little infants uh, with the cradle cap. That's the same uh, yeast that causes cradle cap that stays well on our skin and there's no cure for any kind of condition uh, There's no cure for seborrheic dermatitis or dandruff. It's something you live with um, You know some people have gotten better or worse during pregnancy because your immune system uh, is changed during pregnancy So there are some pr patients who say hey my scalp got better during pregnancy or it got worse So uh, there's no consistent rule to it during pregnancy um, but it is related to uh, the immune system. So when you're stressed, stress will cause flares of any skin condition uh, with the increased spike of cortisol. It will flare things like hair loss, eczema, psoriasis, and even seborrheic dermatitis. Uh, in terms of the treatment for it, we'll go over that very briefly. This will not replace a visit to your doctors, but I'm just gonna go over it briefly um, at the end of the video. Also include some uh, over-the-counter options that you could start with. All right, so malassezia. It uh, causes seborrheic dermatitis, one end of the spectrum, dandruff, opposite end of the spectrum. You could even say it's scalp psoriasis or psoriasis. The, when I trained at Harvard, um, my professors or attendings um, did believe they were on the same spectrum, seborrheic dermatitis, uh, dandruff being on one end of the spectrum and being on the severe end of the spectrum would be psoriasis. People with psoriasis have a lot of scalp involvement that's very uh, debilitating, affects their quality of life, and they also have very thick, itchy uh, plaques on their scalp, and at times they can even cause hair loss, it's so bad. So um, malassezia, you may also hear about it causing other conditions like tinea versicolor, which are the brown or white spots that happen on our body. Um, during, especially during the summer when it's very humid and hot. It can also cause fungal acne, which is the social media term that's been thrown around, has gone viral. Uh, in the dermatology world, there's no technical term called fungal acne, it's called malassezia folliculitis, or prior, prior to that, we, when, I, when I was in residency, we called it pterosporum folliculitis, which is also due to malassezia, and it's from the yeast um, from our scalp coming down onto our, most commonly on our back and our chest, um, for say young females with long hair and they um, have their hair long and it rests on their back, it can cause itchy fungal acne or malassezia folliculitis. Um, so you, you, you're gonna hear about this yeast quite a bit. There's no way to cure you of it. Um, I would not suggest taking an oral antifungal or anti-yeast pill to eradicate it. It lives on our skin. Try to live with it. It is annoying if you do um, you know, develop unfortunately like a neurologic disease like Parkinson's, you can have a more severe uh, case of seborrheic dermatitis um, with decreased facial movement. Uh, you're gonna have more activity from the yeast. And also if you have a low immune system, say you have HIV AIDS, that can also um, give you a very severe recalcitrant stubborn um, case of seborrheic dermatitis. All right, so going into seborrheic dermatitis, very itchy, flaky, red, can be on all those spots we talked about. You know, just running your hand through your hair, you can get a whole um, 
shower of little dry flakes and that's very common so um, you know people feel badly wearing dark shirts because of the flaking they can get and I had you know I have patients who are um, you know in sales or they work in a casino and dealing cards and they just feel like feel like they have to keep brushing away the flakes off the say the the um, the blackjack table you know those are things that um, patients have to deal with on a daily basis so it's very stubborn very irritating um, it can flare during the winter the summer uh, winter wise uh, we say it can flare um, during that time uh, is because eczema and seborrheic dermatitis are very closely related or connected so patients with eczema a lot of times have scalp involvement and when does eczema really flare winter time and winter is when you really dry out your skin you have the heaters on at home you're going to dry out your scalp as, scalp as well and you're going to get more scalp itch so all year round I'm gonna be working on keeping my scalp at bay because if you get a lot of inflammation in your scalp, you're gonna lose your hair, which is a big no-no. We don't wanna do that. We wanna avoid that as much as possible. Males and females uh, would agree on that. So uh, how do we deal with it? You know, First, introductory uh, shampoos you could look at over the counter would be Head & Shoulders is a classic one. It has zinc pyrith pyrithium, um, and that's a nice ingredient to help calm down the yeast. That uh, shampoo you have to use daily for it to work um, and you have to be consistent with it and you don't expect results right away. For all of these treatments to bring the yeast down, whether it's tinea versicolor, seborrheic dermatitis, um, those things you got to work on for you know four to six weeks you're looking at. Three to, we'll say three to six weeks is what, you, what I tell my patients, okay? The other thing you can consider is Selsin Blue, which has selenium sulfide, different from the zinc pyrithione. Uh, although I think there are some Selsin Blues with the zinc um, ingredient, they also have some salicylic acid in it. Uh, selenium sulfide helps me with my tinea versicolor when I lived in Hawaii, very hot and humid area, and we'd get those white patches on our body. To, um, you know, when you're at the beach all the time, you get the, the yeast really loves that and takes advantage. I did really well just using Selsin Blue, the selenium sulfide version, uh, which helped uh, take away the yeast. Um, the other shampoo that dermatologists, including myself, like to recommend to patients, that is over the counter, would be Neutrogena's T-Cell or T-Gel. T-Cell here has 3% salicylic acid, really good for shedding and exfoliating and taking away the thick uh, scale on the scalp. It's straw colored, doesn't have um, very much, it doesn't have a offensive smell like its cousin T-Gel. Um, T-Gel has coal tar extract, which is um, nice in bringing down inflammation. It's really good as a traditional psoriasis uh, medication that we would do back in the day. Um, it does have a darker color. It's like a dark syrupy color to it. It smells a little bit more offensive because of the coal tar smell. Um, but it is much more anti-inflammatory than this one. This one's more for like shedding scale. The other one is for more like itchy red plaques of your scalp. So I actually use both of these, you know, both of those um, interchangeably throughout the year. Um, they all work together, I think, well, synergistically. If you are pregnant, always consult your doctor before starting any of these um, over-the-counter medications. Uh, especially if you get a hold on uh, your hands on to some over-the-counter Nizorol, which is ketoconazole shampoo. Um, please consult your doctor first before starting those uh, shampoos. So going into ketoconazole, the uh, going into ketoconazole, this is the size of a standard bottle of ketoconazole. This is 2% prescription strength. And it's, uh, yeah, it doesn't, it's a pretty small size. I prescribe this for patients every other day, uh, every other day use, and that's you know pretty effective itself to using it at every other day versus head and shoulders, cells and blue, you have to use every day for it to be very effective. This one you can you know, alternate with this one with this, back and forth. Um, so I like this shampoo quite a bit, but not everyone likes it. Some people get irritation from it. I find that men really like ketoconazole shampoo. My female patients, I might give an alternative like cyclopyrox shampoo, for example, um, which also brings down the yeast. Other things you can consider uh, with your dermatologist would be a topical steroid, uh, drops, foams, sprays. They come in different formulations. Um, I have the drops on hand in case I get an itchy scalp or a really stubborn inflamed area that's flaking that you can have on hand. But again, that's a prescription medicine. You have to talk to your doctor about how to use it appropriately, how often you can use it. 
Um, and also you have to avoid using it on the face because it does thin out the skin if you use it a lot. And we definitely don't wanna thin out the skin on the face. So you gotta um, definitely talk to your dermatologist and follow the instructions very uh, carefully with those medications, but they are very effective in calming down that inflammation, the redness, the scaling that are um, being driven by the yeast. So if you pair the shampoo with the steroid drops, these two together, it's great. You have the shampoo to bring down the growth of the, inf of the yeast, and then you're gonna have the steroids that's calming down the inflammation caused by the yeast. You're gonna do really well, you should. Um, and, and so uh, that's a quick overview of of um, treating seborrheic dermatitis. I don't give anti, um, antifungal pills for this condition. Back in the day, I think they did, but um, ketoconazole uh, pills, it does have a black box warning for, uh, having hip, uh, for causing hepatic um, toxicity, hepatic damage or liver damage. Um, that can even be life-threatening in some cases. So they definitely have a black box warning on the pills itself. As a, as a cream, as a shampoo, ketoconazole, totally fine. But again, we're gonna, you'd have to consult your physician before starting uh, ketoconazole, whether it's the over-the-counter nizorol or the prescription um, ketoconazole. Um, okay, so uh, that's, that's, uh, that's a little quick summary about it. You know, psoriasis is a chronic condition that's inflammatory. It uh, affects the scalp, but also can affect the nails. Of course, the skin, elbows and knees being a classic area for it. But it could also be a systemic inflammatory condition too, where it also increases your risk of heart attack. So it can cause coronary artery inflammation. So that's the other end of the spectrum that I see. And it really is fulfilling when I get my patients clear on medications, whether it's just topical creams or we get them on a systemic medicine, like a pill, like Otesla, or an injection, like Taltz or Tromphia, whatever, what have you. I'm not paid by any of these companies. I'm not I'm just throwing those out, those names. Um, but they're really great um, medications to help patients regain some quality of life because it can be very troublesome having arthritis. A third of the psoriasis patients will get psoriatic arthritis. And we worry about your hands getting so inflamed, the joints in your hands getting so inflamed that you can't use your hands anymore. So it's very important to see your dermatologist, rheumatologist, if you are getting um, arthritis with your psoriasis, okay? So um, I hope this video is helpful. You know, I did an uh, article on uh, dry, itchy scalps uh, in emedihealth.com. Uh, they uh, reached out to me and I did a quick article um, on it. So check that out if you want to. Uh, read more about uh, seborrheic dermatitis or dandruff. And, uh, but I really appreciate you guys watching. Please like the video. Please share with your friends who also suffer from dry itchy scalp and or psoriasis. And um, please subscribe to the channel. Please drop some comments down below. Take care, guys. Appreciate the, um, the support and be well. Be, um, just have these medications on hand because when the weather changes from hot to cold or cold to hot, just keep in mind that that's when um, a lot of skin conditions can flare, eczema, psoriasis, and even your scalp. Okay, take care, peace.